Thank you. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Administrator Wick. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Uh, in March, during my questioning of NTSB Chair Jennifer Humadi, when she appeared before this committee, she told me that Boeing was missing key documents and records about the specific MAX 9 aircraft involved in the Alaska Airlines Flight 1282. Has your investigation determined whether the documents specific to that, that MAX 9 plane, whether they even exist? Uh, that, is, that is part of our overall investigation of this incident, and my understanding is that is true, that, that they, do, they do not exist. Um, if I understand correctly, the security camera footage was overwritten. Boeing doesn't know who performed work on the door plug, and no paperwork exists. Is, is that all right? That, that is my understanding. Um, that seems remarkable and shocking. Is there concern at, at the FAA that, that an employee at Boeing is hiding key information about this? That, that investigation is ongoing, and I know the Justice Department has a separate investigation underway. Uh, so I think they're too, too early to have an opinion about that, but we will thoroughly investigate those circumstances. Prior to the MAX crashes, Boeing was a storied company with a rich history of building the best and the safest planes in the world. During the pandemic, Boeing conducted employee buyouts and involuntary layoffs. Once travel picked up and airplane orders resumed, Boeing hired to fill the workforce gap. According to a Wall Street Journal article published this week, of the more than 30,000 Boeing employees represented by one of the unions, roughly half have less than six years experience. That is double the level before the pandemic. During your investigation, to what extent has the inexperience of engineers or inspectors contributed to some of the observations made in the FAA's audit? I think significantly, and I would say that this, uh, this lack of, of transfer of knowledge from early retirements and the impact of COVID has been a risk throughout the aviation ecosystem. And I think the better companies have used their SMS system to identify the risk and put specific programs in place to mitigate that, either bringing retired employees back to monitor, uh, giving more training, uh, or having let fewer requirements for new employees. Uh, Boeing did not have a program like that in place, and that is a gap that was identified in this part of the new, the new uh, plan. That same Wall Street Journal article went on to say that Boeing executives, quote, didn't realize the extent of the knowledge loss until after the Alaska accident. What requirements will the FAA impose on Boeing to compensate for the inexperience on the factory floor? So the, so the plan includes a number of employee-specific uh, initiatives focused on training, uh, increasing the amount of training, but also their, ins their instructions and installation protocols are extraordinarily complex, and they've recognized that. So they're, they're going through a process to simplify, and then they're going to be able to measure proficiency of employees to, to perform tasks. So that is a part of the key, the KPI measurements that we'll be looking at. In January, you announced that Boeing would not be allowed to produce more than 38 MAX 9 aircraft each month. Right now, Boeing's producing around 32 each month. My top priority in this regard, as is yours, is ensuring that these planes are safe. But we also want Boeing to be competitive worldwide. What metrics will Boeing have to meet in order for it to be able to make more planes? So there are a variety of metrics. There are the, the five or six KPIs that we'll be monitoring. Those are up and running. We are establishing what is the green zone, what is the yellow zone, and what is red. So those need to stay in the green zone while they're increasing production. And then we have progress that we're monitoring on the other elements of the plan, the roll, rollout of tool management systems and training and things of that nature. And we will measure that through the audit. So it'll be a combination of those factors. We'll be able to watch that as they start to increase production uh, from the current level and make an evaluation as they get to that 38 number. As you know, the Boeing MAX airplane crashes in 2018 and 2019 shocked and scared pilots and passengers alike. Boeing made terrible mistakes that killed hundreds of people and shattered the company's reputation. Likewise, the FAA was caught flat-footed with shoddy oversight. In this latest crisis of confidence, 
What is the FAA doing differently to hold itself accountable for the oversight the agency is required to conduct? So it's a, it's a good question and a fair question, and I think it's, uh, we have been too much in reactive mode, uh, waiting for some event to occur and analyzing the events to find out what to do differently. So we're shifting to a much more proactive uh, approach. So on the manufacturing side, it's introducing inspectors and coming up with clear indices to, to monitor performance. Uh, we're also taking a look at our own risks, including controllers, which is why we did this fatigue study, and we're building in more rest for schedules that shouldn't have existed, frankly, before. Um, and, and really, the, the, the ultimate goal is to get to data and to get the data that we can analyze up front to try to see these things before they happen. And that's not an easy lift, but it is achievable, and, and that's going to be really one of my main focuses going, going forward. Thank you. Senator Klobuchar. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and 